What is going on guys? Even before the start of NFL free agency and the draft, all 32 clubs need to make some difficult decisions as they prepare their rosters for the 2020 season. Plenty of big name players are slated to find new homes soon. So let's get into it. Here is one player that every NFL team needs to move on from in 2020, be it an outright release or a trade. Arizona Cardinals. David Johnson. The Cardinals extended their stud running back for three years and over 39 million in September 2018. It was a little risky, since Johnson had been limited to one game in the previous year due to a wrist injury. After a nice bounce back season in 2018, Johnson regressed mightily and lost the starting duties. <laughs> Duty to mid-season trade pickup Kenyon Drake in 2019. DJ is set to make just over 14 million in 2020, and his dead cap value is a whopping 16 million. So releasing him doesn't make much sense. But if the cards can find a trade partner for Johnson before the June 1st deadline, they could save themselves a little over 8 million in cap space. Even if they have to surrender a sweetener, like a mid-round pick, to another team to get them to willingly take on Johnson's contract via trade. Arizona should do it. You can't pay that much to a guy who might not even be your starting running back. Atlanta Falcons, Vic Beasley. Atlanta's first round pick from 2015 enjoyed a Pro Bowl year in 2016 with 15.5 sacks and six forced fumbles, guiding the team to a Super Bowl 51 appearance. Well, Beasley never wound up regaining that Pro Bowl form, yet the Falcons remained patient in hopes that he would hit his ceiling yet again. It hasn't happened. And Atlanta's defense has been downright awful under Dan Quinn, so it's time to hit the reset button. And that includes Beasley, who's slated to hit the free agent market. Atlanta has to cut its losses and then just move on. There are better options in free agency. Baltimore Ravens. Brandon Carr. The Ravens have more than enough playmakers in the secondary, so they can afford to move on from an aging corner in Brandon Carr. Marcus Peters, Marlon Humphrey, and Earl Thomas are capable of holding down the fort. The Ravens already cut well-respected safety Tony Jefferson, and it's unlikely that GM Eric DeCosta will stop there. He needs to clear up cap room for the Ravens to add other offensive weapons, especially while Lamar Jackson is on his rookie deal. Baltimore doesn't have too many bad contracts on their hands, but moving out Carr makes good sense from a business standpoint. Buffalo Bills. Star Lotula Lay. Like the Ravens, the savvy Bills front office has managed to avoid handing out many bad contracts. GM Brandon Bean has a lot of cap space to work with, so he really doesn't have to make any cap saving moves. But this veteran defensive tackle has become expendable, especially with Ed Oliver set for a bigger role in 2020. If Bean wants to reshape his championship caliber defense a bit, it might make sense to move on from Star, who has three years left on his deal. But truth be told, we're really nitpicking here. There aren't really any toxic players or contracts that must be dumped in Buffalo. Carolina Panthers, Cam Newton. Shoulder and foot injuries have limited the 2015 MVP to 16 games over the last two years. Carolina has to ask themselves if it's worth keeping an aging, off-injured, and declining quarterback for the long run. To us, it's a fairly easy answer. Kyle Allen performed nicely for large stretches of 2019, and if the Panthers don't think he's the answer, they can always dip their feet in the QB-heavy free agent market for the 2020 draft class. Releasing Newton would save Carolina $19.1 million, and that's a lot of money. I don't know if you knew that. And that giant chunk of cash could go towards landing another big-name quarterback. Or the front office could play the whole, you know, loyalty card and keep him around. Though that carries far more risk than reward for a rebuilding Panthers team at this point. Chicago Bears, Mitch Trubisky. The Bears have already committed to Trubisky in 2019. It's never too late to change their minds though. Like, why not just trade or cut Trubisky and make a serious play for Tom Brady? Or Jameis Winston, or Phillip Rivers, or Andy Dalton, or Teddy Bridgewater, or Cam Newton, or somebody in the 2020 draft. There are at least 10 better quarterbacks that the Bears could pursue. We know they won't listen to us, but if I were GM for a day. I'd be replacing Trubisky right away. At the very least, the Bears have to bring in a veteran to compete with Trubisky for the starting job. Cincinnati Bengals, Andy Dalton. The Red Rifle led Cincinnati to the postseason in each of his first five years. But the team has hit rock bottom ever since, and now they're in rebuilding mode, which means it's probably time to move on. The Bengals have to take Joe Burrow with the first overall pick. If and when they do, he'll be ready to lead the offense right away. Trading or cutting Dalton is a no-brainer for the Bengals. There's no incentive to keep an expensive backup around. Thank Andy for all he's done and move on. That's the right move here. But knowing the Bengals, they'll give him a $100 million extension while trading the first overall pick for three fifth round selections. Okay, that was an exaggeration, but you get what I'm saying. Cleveland Browns. David Njoku. The Browns roster is loaded with talent, and new GM Andrew Berry and head coach Kevin Stefanski should not touch it too much. What they really have to do is implement a no-nonsense culture more than anything. But if there's one player for the front office to move on from, young and underachieving tight end David Njoku might be the best option. Njoku was limited to four games in 2019 because of a wrist injury, and even before that, he wasn't exactly productive. What would you say 
you do here. The Browns should trade Njoku for a mid-round pick, and they should target a more established tight end like Austin Hooper or Hunter Henry in free agency, or even Kyle Rudolph or Jimmy Graham via the trade market. One of those four would work far better for the development of Baker Mayfield. Dallas Cowboys Tyrone Crawford. The Cowboys will lose one of Dak Prescott, Amari Cooper, and Byron Jones. The expectation is that they'll keep the first two while losing the Pro Bowl cornerback. Prescott and Cooper figure to eat up a giant chunk of Cowboys cap space, which is why Jerry Jones needs to make a tough decision or two. Moving on from veteran tackle Tyrone Crawford, who carries a $9.1 million cap hit for 2020, makes good sense here. Unless Jones wants to cut ties with one of the very pricey Pro Bowl offensive linemen, Crawford is the most logical release candidate here. Denver Broncos, Royce Freeman. The Broncos drafted the Oregon product in the third round back in 2018, but the returns haven't been great. Freeman hasn't been able to unseat undrafted running back Philip Lindsay, who recorded consecutive 1,000-yard seasons. Freeman has done okay for a number two running back. I guess I have to take you at your word, <laughs> number two. <laughs> nice. But the Broncos can do better. They may as well cut their losses here and continue to roll with Lindsay over the long run. Detroit Lions, Matthew Stafford. The Detroit Lions have remained terrible mainly because the Ford family ownership doesn't like making changes. They're super loyal to GM Bob Quinn for whatever reason, and Matt Patricia remains head coach despite consecutive losing seasons. Remember when Jim Caldwell was fired after recording three winning seasons in four years? The Lions don't have the guts to do it, but they should move on from the off-injured quarterback Matthew Stafford, who hasn't recorded a single playoff win in his career. Or, you know, they can accept mediocrity and keep on vying for seven to nine win seasons. Stafford needs a change of scenery. The Lions need to rebuild entirely. What sense does it make to keep around an expensive, above average quarterback who isn't going to lead you to the promised land? Green Bay Packers, Jimmy Graham. Aaron Rodgers has never used his tight ends that much, but it was not hard to get excited when the Packers landed pro bowler Jimmy Graham on a three-year deal worth $30 million in 2018. In his two seasons with the Packers, Graham has only recorded 93 receptions for 1,083 yards and five touchdowns. Injuries and age have quickly caught up to Graham, and the Packers have no reason to believe he'll turn it around in his contract year. May as well cut Graham and spend the money on more productive pass catching options. Other than that, there aren't any expensive and underperforming Packers players that appear to be prime candidates for the chopping block. Houston Texans, Will Fuller. It's a shame that injuries have held back the 2016 first round pick, because Will Fuller and DeAndre Hopkins really could have formed a dynamic one-two pass catching duo. But injuries have limited Fuller to 42 games over his first four seasons. He's been quite productive while on the field. The only problem is that he's not on the field nearly enough. The Texans should stop waiting for Fuller to be healthy. They should just trade or cut him and find a capable number two receiver in free agency. Or in the deep 2020 draft class, AJ Green and Emmanuel Sanders would look great in Houston uniforms. And you know that. Indianapolis Colts, Jacoby Brissett. After Andrew Luck retired, Jacoby Brissett was handed a two-year extension worth $30 million with the Colts. But Brissett simply wasn't able to elevate the Colts offense in 2019, and they finished with a disappointing 7-9 and nine record. There are way too many quality quarterback options out there this year, and they probably won't land Brady. But someone like Rivers, Dalton, or Bridgewater would fit nicely in Frank Reich's offense. Or the Colts could look to trade up and find their quarterback of the future in the draft. Either way, for Seth's 11-19 record as a starter in Indy, speaks for itself. He's not a franchise quarterback, but rather a capable backup. The Colts need to move on from him and find somebody who can bring this team back to the playoffs. Jacksonville Jaguars, Marquise Lee. The Jaguars curiously handed Lee a four-year deal worth $38 million in the 2018 offseason, even though he had never put up Pro Bowl numbers. A torn ACL sidelined him for all of 2018, and he was limited to six games in 2019. Miraculously, the Jaguars are up against the cap despite being a pretty bad football team. They can't get Nick Foles' contract off their hands. They're stuck with him for now, but they can at least cut Lee, hey Lee and some veteran defensive players to clear some much-needed cap space. Lee isn't about to return and put up a career year at the stage, and that's why the Jaguars need to accept their mistake and move on. Kansas City Chiefs, Daniel Sorensen. The veteran safety has made some big plays during his tenure in KC, helping them win Super Bowl 54 against the San Francisco 49ers. But the Chiefs will eventually have to find some cap room, with Patrick Mahomes expected to get a record-setting extension. Cutting loose this guy who's entering the final year of his contract would save KC some cap room. But we're honestly nitpicking here. The Chiefs don't have many bad contracts. Their star players are deserving of what they're earning. Nobody would complain if KC wound up keeping them. I mean, they just won the Super Bowl, so he must have done something right. 
Los Angeles Chargers, Melvin Gordon. This is a really easy one. Gordon held out at the start of the season and missed four games. The Chargers wisely didn't give in because they were getting enough production from Justin Jackson and Austin Eckler. And even when he did return, Gordon disappointed with just 3.8 yards per carry and four fumbles. The Chargers aren't going to suddenly overpay for a replaceable player who's coming off an extremely disappointing season. So Mr. Gordon, good luck in your next team. Los Angeles Rams. Todd Gurley. That four-year, $60 million extension for Gurley used to look good. I mean, he's a two-time first-team All-Pro who took home the 2017 Offensive Player of the Year award. But knee injuries quickly caught up to Gurley, who hasn't been the same explosive game-changing force dating back to the 2018 postseason. No way the Rams can cut Gurley and take on a hefty dead money ticket. But they should shop him around the league and throw in a sweetener, maybe Robert Woods or a draft pick. And they can get a cheaper impact player of some sort. It's unlikely to happen, but we've seen crazier things unfold before. The Rams Rams know they gotta try to find a way out of Gurley's deal. And a running back needy team with a lot of cap space might be nice enough to help. Las Vegas Raiders, Derek Carr. Still getting used to it. Kinda feel like I gotta say Oakland every time, but we'll all get used to it eventually. Raiders fans know all about the rumors of Derek Carr losing the Raiders locker room and the trust of John Gruden. We don't fully know what's happening behind the scenes, but we do know this, Carr is good. Not great. He's had more than enough time to prove himself as a championship caliber quarterback, and it just hasn't happened. Well, Vegas will be a prime hotspot for the relocated Raiders. The no state tax will help immensely as well. Tom Brady, Cam Newton, and Phillip Rivers would be perfect fits for Gruden and the Raiders. But this can only happen if they trade or release Carr. Seems like an easy choice to us. Miami Dolphins, Albert Wilson. The Dolphins overpaid for Wilson when they gave him a three-year deal worth $24 million in 2018. There's no justifying his 2020 cap hit of approximately 10.833 million. Miami dealt away pretty much every meaningful impact player they had in 2019. There is plenty of cap space here in 2020 and beyond, but why not create even more by releasing a merely average and mightily overpaid wideout? Minnesota Vikings, Kyle Rudolph. The veteran tight end and Minnesota fan favorite was heavily mentioned in trade rumors entering 2019. Good thing the Vikings kept Rudolph because he caught the game-winning touchdown pass in overtime of their NFC wildcard game against the Saints. But the cap strap Vikings need to get younger and cheaper on both sides of the ball. Irv Smith Jr performed well in his rookie year, and he looks poised to make big leaps in 2020. Rudolph is expendable at this stage of his career. Many could get a mid-round pick for Rudolph's services while clearing vital cap space. For us, it'd be quite surprising if Rudolph was a Viking in 2020. New England Patriots, Mohamed Sanu. The Pats were so desperate for receiving help in 2019 that Bill Belichick did something he really doesn't do a lot and overpaid for a mediocre wideout in Mohamed Sanu, handing Atlanta a second round pick for his services. But the speedy Sanu couldn't get much of anything going in Foxborough. He finished with just 26 catches for 207 yards and one touchdown in eight games. That's simply not good enough. The Pats will be right up against the cap, especially if they retain Tom Brady. Our advice? Admit your mistake and cut Sanu loose. The Patriots have to save every dollar they can here. New Orleans Saints, Patrick Robinson. Like the Chiefs, New Orleans' highest paid players are also, well, their most productive players. There aren't any bad contracts on their hands here, but off the injured corner Patrick Robinson hasn't been worthy of the four year $20 million pact he signed in 2018. He's been limited to 14 games over the past two years, and New Orleans has to start paying up for its young stars soon. Why keep an injured, aging, and expensive Robinson at this point? Releasing him is an easy choice here. New York Giants, Nate Solder. Despite never earning a Pro Bowl selection, Nate Solder was a can-miss commodity in 2018 free agency. Since there aren't many truly reliable left tackles anymore, Solder inked a four-year, $62 million contract with the Giants in 2018, but he's performed well below expectations there. He recorded a mere 64.7 grade from PFF for the 2019 season, and the Giants shouldn't be willing to pay a large sum of money for that type of production again. Be it a trade or release, New York needs to move out Solder and rebuild their offensive line from scratch. No point in waiting for him to magically turn it around. It's not gonna happen. New York Jets, Le'Veon Bell. Now the Jets might be keeping Bell, they might not. You know, you never know what's gonna happen. The Jets handed Bell a four-year deal worth $52.5 million in 2019, and he simply didn't perform anywhere close to the Pro Bowl level we saw in Pittsburgh. Bell was heavily mentioned in trade rumors ahead of the 2019 deadline, with the Steelers being listed as a possible landing spot. Given Bell's overall skill set and better health status compared to the guys like Gurley, he isn't exactly impossible to trade. Adam Gase wouldn't fully commit to Bell for 2020, and reports suggested he wasn't happy about the Jets throwing so much money at this position. So the Jets should just admit that they screwed up, and deal Bell to another team. If they do, they should be able to fetch a mid or late round pick in return. Philadelphia Eagles, Alshon Jeffrey. The Pro Bowl wideout played a huge role on the Eagles Super Bowl 52 championship team, but injuries have slowed him down a bit, and Philly needs to reset a wideout. Deshaun Jackson's return to Philly disappointed. He's a goner. Bye bye. Expect underperforming wideout Nelson Aguilar 
to also leave. I'm sorry, what? What part didn't you understand? The buh or the bye? The bye. With so many talented wideouts available in free agency and the draft, Hallie Roseman has every reason to go younger and cheaper at the position. The Eagles can probably land a second or third round pick for Jeffrey, or perhaps another impact player for a one for one swap. May as well do it while his value is high, because Jeffrey just isn't getting any younger. Pittsburgh Steelers, Steven Nelson, Ben Roethlisberger's new deal looks iffy right now. But otherwise, the Steelers have done a pretty good job in managing their cap situation. However, veteran corner Steven Nelson should be deemed expendable here. A $10.75 million cap hit for 2020 and 2021. Yeah, no thanks. Especially since Pittsburgh has more than enough playmakers on defense. Nelson isn't what you'd call a Pro Bowl talent, and the acquisition of Micah Fitzpatrick made him less valuable in Pittsburgh. The Steelers should look to trade Nelson or release him. He isn't anything close to being worthy of a $10.75 million cap hit. San Francisco 49ers, Jarek McKinnon. McKinnon signed a four-year $30 million pact in 2018, but an ACL terrorist prevented him from playing a single snap in San Fran. There is no reason to keep McKinnon around, especially since the 49ers are loaded at the running back position. This is a no-brainer for the 49ers, who need to spend money to find a new wideout or two. McKinnon simply won't be a 49er in 2020. Seattle Seahawks. Quandre Diggs. The Seahawks need to rebuild their entire defense. Shaq Griffin is among the few standouts on that unit, and the Seahawks won't be a Super Bowl contender until they upgrade both their pass rush and their secondary. Safety Quandre Diggs has been solid, but not anything spectacular. Seattle can find more productive safeties in the draft if they don't feel like dipping their feet in the free agent market. Pete Carroll needs to bring sweeping changes to his defense. And he can start with Diggs, but otherwise. There aren't any other expensive and underachieving veterans that are prime cut or trade candidates here. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Jameis Winston. The Bucs may be tempted to keep a guy who threw for 5,109 yards and 33 touchdowns in 2019. They may also be tempted to move on from a guy who threw a whopping 30 interceptions in 2019. Our advice, find somebody else already. Winston has a 28 and 42 record through his first four seasons as a starter. The attitude problems and the issues with protecting the football are too much to overcome. Why expect them to suddenly change now? Go sign Phillip Rivers or Cam Newton or Tom Brady. Literally any of them. Probably not Brady, but you know what I'm saying. Stop being loyal to a guy who puts up fancy stats but not enough wins. Tennessee Titans. Delaney Walker. The three-time Pro Bowler is entering his final year of his contract. But as much as the Titans love Walker, they simply have to move on from the veteran tight end. Injuries have limited Walker to just eight total games over the last two years. And they made the AFC Championship game without him in 2019. He's a nice luxury when healthy, but not a necessity. Walker's cap hit for 2020 is $8.085 million. The Titans didn't need him with Jonu Smith ready for a bigger role in 2020. And the Titans need cap space if they want to keep Ryan Tannehill and Derek Henry. So expect Walker to be released. Washington Redskins. Trent Williams. Having disrespected the seven-time Pro Bowl offensive tackle and franchise star, the Redskins owe it to Trent Williams to trade him to a team that will appreciate him. That's all we can really say. Their handling of his health status was nothing short of embarrassing. But what do you expect from this dysfunctional organization? If Dan Snyder can just swallow his pride and trade Williams, he'd be doing some great for Washington's future. They're looking at at least a first-round pick for Williams, and possibly more. So apologize to Williams, Trade him and move on. Shouldn't be that complicated. I'm sure you can do it. Which player do you think your favorite team should move on from this offseason? Join me in the comment section below. Make sure to follow myself and TPS on social media. We post great content all the time. Uh, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, we're on everything. Go find us. If you like this video, give it a like. It takes one click right down below. And of course, subscribe to TPS because we post videos every single day. Every day is a new video. So subscribe. Of course, I'm Jason Biondo. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. On my knee. <laughs>